Um, all right. Uh, my alma mater, Arizona. I got good ones here. I got good ones. You, 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 and Hummel do the exact opposite. He like plays down. He's like, I got terrible names. Here's yeah, what I'm throwing out. You're like, I've got the best names. This is who the AD is hiring. Mark it down. Throws yeah. out a Honestly, I don't understand why he's doing it. They should fire Dave Hickey, the athletic director at Arizona, and hire me to 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 make this happen. Yeah, that's what they should do. I'm telling you, I got your, great. Your name was on my list, actually. That's good. That's good I'm good. telling you, I could raise money. I could hire coaches. I wouldn't hire that football coach, that the Patriots quarterback coach. Look at what he did with Cam Newton this year. Come on. The hell are we hiring him for? If you know how to hire a football coach. Go hire the guy from San Jose State, Brennan. I've done my research. Go get Brennan. You see that dude? He was singing after the locker room when go they won. Brennan. That's the first day of the job. Yeah, go get Brennan. That's all you're going to say. You know who he is. Hey, get him from San Jose State. He's coming to Tucson. Come on. All right, anyway, Arizona. I'm going to embarrass the two out of you on this one. I'm going to let you both go first. Who's up? No, I don't like that setup. You go first. Nope, you're going first. I'll go right. first. Yeah, I'll you go first. You go first. Swing for the fence, Mark Few. Keep him on the West Coast. He will say no, but that's the swing for the fence. Okay. And I like my actual realistic hire, Greg McDermott. Not bad. Not bad. With the way he plays offensively. I think he'd be down to go to a climate where he could play golf all the time. Yeah, it's close to Scottsdale. He he wouldn't even be working. He would He'd love be it. playing golf every day. I, I'm but going- this this is another one like the Kansas one where there's going to be the caveat of what what are you taking over? Let's say it's a one year postseason ban here. All right, so my swing for the fence is actually the same as Kansas Beard. Um, you know, a little bit different, but it's Southwest. I mean, he's recruited at least around there. Um, and then, so I was trying to back back when everything was going down with Sean. I try to think of who I wrote back then. I thought Mike Bray would have been a good hire then. I don't <laughs> think you can. I don't, I don't. I don't think that's the hire right now. No. Um, no. I actually. I don't. I don't know if I have a good one for this. I think Damon Stoudemire would be in the mix. Uh, again, depending on what you're taking over, I think a dark horse could be like a Miles Simon. Um, Is Miles Simon's an assistant with the Lakers now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, th- I think one of those two would would be my kind of dark horse would have some sort of internal momentum to, to get in the mix. All right. My, my swing for the fence is the Warriors are, are, are not looking good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, They're not looking good. Most pick of the year. They're not looking good. I'm going with the guy who, who bleeds. He bleeds red. He tweets out bear down. Steve Kerr, he's going to have nothing left. They're going to lose every game. They stink. Have you watched them? They stink. They're he could, done. He could go do TV, make a ton of money, and then literally get rehired in the NBA in a heartbeat. He wants to recruit. He wants, <laughs> he <laughs> wants no, he to doesn't recruit. recruit. He doesn't want to recruit. No, but he'd be a hell of a recruiter. He would be good. Think about it. He, he would. He'd get that program, like, elite level. If he hired the right staff. All right. Again, it's swing for the fences. I'm not saying you're, you're, you're going to embarrass me and Hummel, and then you drop Steve Kerr. Worst and that's not what I was embarrassing you. I actually have two good realistic hires that neither one of you have mentioned. What do you got? Okay. Two really good ones. Number one, Mark Pope. That's I a good think one. He'd be good. I think that's he'd be really good, good there. High energy, yeah. knows the West Coast. He'd be 1A or 1B for me. Damon would be in the mix too. And then I got another one. That Borzella wrote a big story on, and Come I know in. you can't you can't hire an assistant coach, I mean, when I made your head coach. That's I mean, bullshit. I'm gonna hire Tommy Lloyd, who can go overseas and get big time dudes over and over and over. He is the guy who's helped Bill Gonzaga, uh, goes out and recruits overseas. Look at Hummel. Hummel's laughing at me right so, now. Like I am, I can't even believe that you tried to hype this as you're knocking this out of the park, and then you come with this shit. Yeah, yeah, big time, right? This is awful. It's terrific. No. It's outside the box. Mark Pope is a really good hire. It really is. McDermott, the, the, my worry with McDermott is he's done it at the high major level, and it didn't it didn't work recruiting at, at that level against – at Arizona. Are you, have to are you saying them. the Big East is not a high major conference? Is that what you're saying right here on this podcast? No, I'm saying most of the players he's gotten have not been uh, waging war with some of the other elite programs. That's all I'm saying. 
I think he, he's um, perfect at Creighton, and I, I think he knows that. I think he knows he would never leave Creighton. He's got Bruce Rasmussen, one of the best ADs. It, it, they let him do whatever he wants there now. He's in the Big East. I just There's thought no his pressure. play would be good in the Pac-12, and I thought – It would. It yeah. would. Yeah, I, I. but I think, again, I think Pope would be great because of the way he plays um, wide open. And, and, and to me, Tommy Lloyd would just get dudes. He would get overseas dudes, and not just as as Jeff knows, re- transfers. He was the one who got Andrew Nemhard. Um, he gets a, most of those transfers uh, are Tommy Lloyd's guys. So, um, all right, last one. Mark Few is a coach here. What's that? Are you downplaying Mark Few's ability as a head coach here? I'm downplaying his ability to recruit. Wow. Because he doesn't Ooh. like to recruit. He's got good not. Like Mark View, they have to pull out of with his family uh, in July. Like he doesn't want to. He'll do it, but he doesn't want to do it. And I've heard stories, and I've never asked him this, whether it's true or not. But one of the stories I heard was he put all this time into Luke Ridnour years ago. Remember Luke Ridnour, McDonald's All-American out of Oregon, had a, had a hell of a career. And he put so much time in early on and didn't get him. And he was at every game, everywhere he went, all summer, all, you know, every day. And he didn't get him. And he said after that, he's like, I'm not doing that again. I'm, I'm not I'm not doing that again. Um, so now, listen, it hasn't hurt him. Well, that's the thing. I, I honestly don't know a lot about, like, the recruiting side of this. But that's yeah. pretty shocking to hear, that he's not a good recruiter, but he has the players on his team. Not he's- saying he's not a good recruiter. He's not like Izzo. He's not out there every single day. He'll pick his spots. Most of the stuff he'll do, a lot of it will be in the West Coast. He'll maybe come in for the Peach Jam for a few days and then get out where Izzo is out every single day, every day he can be out. Painter, I bet, is the same thing. I bet if you ask Painter, the last day he was not on the road, it was probably for a wedding of a player or something like that. But Mark Few, what would you guess, Jeff? He's out, I don't know. 50, 60 percent of the days. Matt, that feels low. I mean, I don't know where he is. I mean, all the day. I mean, like fishing. He does. He, does, he loves fishing. He does. Loves um, fishing. He's got great balance. Give him credit. Like he's I'm not. The whole their whole staff, I'm, their whole program's got unbelievable balance. Right. Like there's no like get in the office at seven a.m. and leave it at midnight. We're watching film until one a.m. There's none of that. Can I give you my favorite story when I was in Spokane? My favorite story is, so uh, I'm at practice. First time I'm there, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago. And uh, I'm watching practice, and he's in his, like, jorts running practice. Few is. And uh, practice ends, and literally he's like, come on, walk over here. And we walk to, like, the concourse, like, like maybe 50 feet over there, 50 feet. And two minutes after practice ends, he literally pours me a beer from the tap and we're drinking a beer like less than five minutes after practice ends. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. And, and you know, where you stay at the Davenport. I yep. check in at the hotel. You got beer waiting for you in the room. I'm like, this is the life. Like it is the life, you know, what he's got. It's against a nice, little, nice little town. I like it. He's never leaving. He's no. never, ever, ever, ever leaving. That's why like, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, like Tommy's been mentioned with Tommy Lloyd's been mentioned with other head coaching jobs. Like, a, I mean, he gets paid uh, like well, well, really well, and you know, like few. I mean, he loves being there. He loves. I mean, like economy. He's always said, like, you know, I want my family to to say, oh, they grew up a certain place. I don't want them living here four years, yep. living him three years. I want them to say, oh, I'm from Spokane. I grew up in Spokane. I had a childhood in Spokane. And he's like, it's just. I like it here and I don't I don't feel the need to go bouncing around for head coaching jobs. 